In this video, we'll look at the auto growth node. The auto growth node creates an entire tree or a bush with just a single node. So let's add one to the scene. And a leaf node is automatically added as well. The scale is already set for us. I'll reduce the scale to 0.5 nonetheless to make it a little smaller. So the first thing we'll notice is that the auto growth works with age and with iterations. And this means that the age slider on the setup tab is enabled. You can use that slider to grow an entire tree from the seedling to the finished plant, all pre-built within that single node. The max age defines the maximum age that the plant can reach and the number of iterations that the plant uses for the plant growth. So by increasing this, you can create even bigger trees than with the default. So I suggest using a medium value while you're working on the tree so that the generation times don't get too long. You can still push the plant to maximum age later. So let's walk through the settings of the auto growth node one by one. Many of the settings are similar to what we usually have in segment nodes, but they are renamed with biological terms here. The inter-node length is the length between two butts in the plant. A butt can either be a new branching level or a twig or a leaf. So by increasing the inter-node length, the distance between each of these butts increases and all of the branching levels get longer, including the trunk. The auto growth node is so much fun to play around with. We just changed the inter node length and no other setting and the entire plant looks so different just by moving that single slider. It's the same for the next setting, the butt radius. The butt radius is the radius that you know from other segment nodes. By increasing it, you increase the radius of all branching levels. So of the trunk, the branches and the twigs. Lower or smaller values usually work best for most plants. The angle with parent defines the growth angle between the parent, for example the trunk, and its children, for example the branches. The minimum is zero and the maximum is 180. The most useful values are usually in the range of 20 to 60 degrees. Angular noise is the same as axis perturbation in an advanced segment. By adding more angular noise to the tree, the entire growth structure gets gnarlier, which often requires additional subdivision to look good. By setting this to zero, the entire growth shape is now only governed by the tropism settings to which we will come in a moment. You can clearly see this with the curvature towards the sky in this example. But adding a bit of angular noise usually goes a long way in creating a natural appearance. The growth speed influences both the plant radius and the internode length. The bigger the growth speed, the faster both values will increase when you move the sliders. Also, the growth speed adds more iterations per branching level. So by increasing the growth speed, all the branches get longer and a little thicker and more iterations are created per branching level. So you need to be a little bit careful when pushing the setting or you will end up with huge amounts of polygons. The apical setting is the most important one for working with the auto growth node. Apical describes whether the side buds or the top buds of a plant grow faster. This strongly influences the overall shape of the plant. So with this setting we can go from dense bushes to medium trees to pine-like tree structures. The range of the apical setting goes from minus 0.1 to plus 0.1. And the more we move towards plus 0.1, the closer we get to a single trunk with only a few branches on the side. I'll increase the butt radius to make the effect a little more noticeable. 
Again, this happens because the main trunk grows faster than the side trunk. When we move more towards zero, we'll create a very dense tree with lots of twigs and leaves. So you need to be a little bit careful when going close to zero because this will create many, many polygons. And the generation gets obviously a little slower. And by moving all the way to the left, we end up with a more bush-like shape that grows from one central main trunk. So it's bush versus pine-like structure. I'll create a tree with values close to zero but in the negative range and this produces a plant that has many leaves and twigs but generation times won't be too long and will have enough leaf and twigs to understand what the next group of setting does. Now let's look at the decay setting. When we take a closer look at the plant in the 3D view, we see many branches without any leaves. These are dead branches, so health is built into the autogrowth node. The branches are dead because they don't receive enough light. And the decay setting defines how many dead branches are left in the plant. So with a decay of zero, we keep also small twigs in the plant. And by increasing the decay setting, we destroy dead branches over time, so we keep less and less branches until we have only healthy branches with leaves in the tree. So you can also link the decay slider to the health slider, for example, and use this to drive the health of the tree. The amount of light that each branch receives and which controls whether it is dead or not depends on the settings in the shadowing group. So first let's go to the leaf node and add some real world units in here. So I'll set the global scale to 1 and I'll divide the x and y scale by 2 so that we get a proper leaf size. Because next we will need the leaf size inside of the growth node. The shadow size in the shadowing group now corresponds to the size of the leaf that we adjusted. And the strength simulates the translucency of the leaf. So if you added some backlight to the leaf material to simulate translucency, you would enter a corresponding value in here for the strength to determine how much shadow strength is present in the plant. So the shadow strength influences both the decision if a branch is considered to be dead and it also strongly influences the overall plant shape. If the shadow strength is low, we get many, many twigs and leaves and be careful when pushing the setting to a low value because we will create plants with many, many polygons. So I suggest using at least a medium range for shadow strength. Next to both shadow settings, we have the light influence. This setting controls how strongly the branches compete for light and it changes the shape of the entire tree drastically. Together with the values for the shadow size and shadow strength, a total amount of light and shadow intensity for each branch is computed and the growth algorithm decides how the plant will then continue to grow with this amount of light or this amount of shadows. The overall computed value of light and shadow is then used for the shedding threshold setting. This slider decides if a branch is below the shedding threshold or above the shedding threshold. If it is below the shedding threshold, it is not considered to be completely dead and leaves will remain on the branch. If you increase the shedding threshold, 
more and more leaves will disappear because the branches will be considered to be dead. And the decay setting that we looked at earlier will then decide whether the dead branches will be kept or whether they will be removed. So the combinations of shadow settings, light, decay and threshold create very realistic trees. And to make the dead branches look a little more interesting, I'll add some angular noise back into the tree. Next we look at the trapism settings. And first let's increase the vertical trunk. And let's decrease the amount of angular noise so that we can see the effect of the trapism settings better. So vertical trunk forces the trunk to grow as vertically as possible as soon as gravitropism is used. So the setting has only an effect when gravitropism influence is set to a higher value than zero. So gravitropism influence controls the strength of the gravitropism effect and the gravitropism angle controls the growth directions of many of the branches. So with 180 the branches are all pointing down and with the minimum value of zero, the branches point completely up in the sky. So the gravitropism angle is similar to a direction bias in a normal plant, for example. So you can use this to force the plant growth into a specific direction. And with values close to 90 degrees, the branches get oriented more and more horizontally. Now let's set gravitropism back to zero and the angle no longer has any effect. So gravitropism can be mixed with phototropism and phototropism is the tendency of branches to grow towards the light. So this relates to the amount of light influence that you set for the plant. The maximum value for phototropism is 1 and the minimum value is 0, which means phototropism has no effect and the plant grows according to gravitropism only or according to the shadowing and geometry settings. We have two more settings to go and these are the settings in the butt placement group. The butt placement group defines whether new branches are generated on the side, so left and right, of a parent, or on the top or on the bottom. So these are what the sliders favor up and favor sides are for. So with favor up set to a negative range, all the branches start pointing down. And let's take a look at favor sides, which means that we will place more branches to the right or to the left of a parent. Again, this heavily influences the plant shape, just like any other setting in the auto growth node. In general, the auto growth node has a steeper learning curve because most of the settings influence each other and they all have a big impact on the overall plant growth shape. So the auto growth node is not necessarily suitable for modeling a specific plant species, but it is a fantastic tool to quickly create filler vegetation for game engines, for scenes where you need lots of bushes, or dense forest plants and it has a really realistic growth distribution due to all its biological algorithms. Here you see me playing around with the auto growth node a little more, I'm adding textures and I am editing the plant further to make it look a little more dense. So just play around with this node, see how the settings influence each other and start to develop a feeling for how to create certain plant shapes. In the next video, we will take a look at the filter curves next to each setting and how they relate to age and iterations within the autogrowth node.